Yeah, just see that little diggly dang? Pull the dinger and then flip the danger. You know, fly fishing for muskies, when you stop and break it down, is actually a pretty dumb idea. <laughs> Stupid. Every time I've been out fishing for these fish, I've had an opportunity. First challenge was getting them to eat. I just, I'm a freak. Then you got to get the hook into them. Casting, you know, really heavy lines, big flies with heavy rods. Where your fingers are cramped into position from stripping line. Forearms are really, are really sore. You know, and you know you're crazy. <laughs> <laughs> musky, musky, musky. But you do it for that second of hope that this might actually come together. So let's start from the beginning. It is a cool, crisp morning here in the land of 10,000 lakes, Minnesota, the Twin Cities to be specific. And I am on my way to the airport to pick up Rich Hahn of Sims fame. Hey, buddy. And once I have secured Sir Richard Hahn, we are going straight to a metro area lake to start chucking flies at muskies. <laughs> How the f did we get involved in this whole thing? I don't know. Now Robert Hawkins, he owns Bob Mitchell's Fly Shop in Stillwater, Minnesota. He was kind of the ringleader that sort of coordinated all this for me and Rich. Uh, yeah, born and raised in Montana. Moved out here almost two years ago now. You know, I kind of started dipping my uh, my uh, rod in the in the warm water scene a little bit, and I really got addicted really fast. Yeah, there's planes landing right over our heads. He wanted it. You got every bit of it. We moved some fish, Joe caught some pike. You know, we were definitely thinking, hey, wouldn't it be cool to just kind of get one right out of the gate? But you know, it was more of just sort of easing into the next three hard days that we were gonna have on the water. All right, day one tally. Five fish moved, one a confirmed musky, one pike in the boat. That night we drove out to Robert's shop and that's where we met the two next characters in this epic, Russ Gontarek and Gabe Schubert. I am really not a big deal, but I pretend as much. How many muskies have I caught in my lifetime? Mid, mid 20s. And then you've got Gabe, who sort of has that Captain Quint thing going on. I haven't broke the 50 mark yet. I've had him on, but still looking to land one. Gabe's like the, the musky guru of all time around here. So you might notice that we're a little vague on location. Yeah, so it's it, these guys are pretty protective of their water. But suffice it to say, we've made a long drive to a completely different body of water the next morning. What is this now? This be the musky warhorn. I scrimshot it. I've always wanted to scrimshot something. 10,000 pound drift boat. So the anticipation, motoring up that river the first morning was just through the roof. Weather's good, it's windy, it's cloudy, it's like the, you know, the epic musky conditions. Go, uh, hooks into what we think, we all think is a musky. Get him tight, get him tight, get him tight, get him tight, get him tight. When I saw it, I thought it was a, a musky right away. Mike, I mean, I'm not gonna bitch, right? Cause that was a hell of a fight. Man, I thought that was it. And the funny thing about pike is that they're awesome when you're pike fishing. When you're musky fishing, it's kind of like wah, wah, wah. On the other hand, they're great practice. Strip strike is a big part of the equation. If you lift the rod like you're trout fishing, you are done. Robert is the most, he's the worst trout setter I've ever seen in my life. Every time I get a swoosh or a, a swirl, it's just straight up. Gabe just moved a big fish right next to us over there. There was definitely some uh, some action. They just had another one follow. Jesus! Keep her, keep her stripping, stripping. Saw one move off of a log, which was super exciting. Big fish. Big fish follow. Big follow. Hey, hold off here. Big, we had a big fish follow. We'd flash a fish, we'd throw back, and we could never get it to move again. It was like a one-shot deal. Then we hear Robert just screaming from about 100 yards away that he's, they've seen this Goliath. Your hand's still shaking, brother? Dude, I've never in my entire life seen a fish that big behind my fly. You know, and then here is where we screw up. Yeah, I usually would never leave the water when I know there's fish there, but Gabe's really kind of the guru here, so I trust his judgment, and we're gonna go find out. And then everything just fell apart. You don't freaking leave fish to find fish. 
Now we're driving around lost. Look, look, he's going back down the dead end. We just came from there. She's telling him where the muskie is. The boat ramp that the guys used to use was no longer there. So we found this weird part. Feels public. Time is taken away. It just didn't feel right. It didn't feel the same. It didn't feel as fishy. And we did not move anything on our boat. And I, I blame Gabe probably solely. I think it's his problem, not ours. Move one. And this was gonna be our long day, okay? We're floating almost 10 miles of the Mystery River. Weather, again, is perfect. The feeling's low, it feels just super fishy. Started out very promising. I ended up getting a follow by about a 47, 48 inch fish. We fished a ton of good water and we moved just between the two boats just a few fish. It was not, you know, how many muskies can we catch? It was, can the team catch a muskie on the fly? How do you like that? Just like frustrating. And I knew, you know, I just knew, I was like, man, it, you could, I could just feel that it wasn't gonna happen that day. This is gonna cause a big disturbance on the water. One of our last ditch efforts tonight. Where's the bolt ramp? What's up, everybody? I'm gonna make this one quick so we can get back to this hot musky action. Now, I'm not much of a fly guy, but I do have a simple recipe for a bug for all you guys who fish the weedy cover. And it all starts with a wide gap worm hook. Start by piercing a nice long bunny strip and tie it in skin side up. Next, tie in a couple long pieces of flashaboo. Next, get a sparse bunch of bucktail, tie it in at the head, and pull the thread tight to flare it. Finally, push the collar back and make a few wraps in front of it to hold the flare. The deep bend in the hook acts like a keel, which keeps the point riding up. The bunny strip and the flared hair help protect the hook point from collecting weeds. These are great for smallmouth and largemouth, but if you want to catch a muskie, just use live bait. Oh, that's nasty. Uh, uh, we taking it back to the rail. Oh, one till infinity. So we wake up the next day on like zero sleep and make the call to just do a little bit shorter float. Thankfully, the, the vibe is still pretty positive, even though it's sort of the elf in the room, but we don't know if we're going to get one coming in day four. I wasn't worried. I was panicking before you guys got here that we were going to get out of this. One single cast can turn a whole trip around. Dude, 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 dude. Rich strip strikes, whack. I called out, I shouted musky. That was close. <laughs> oh, oh, that was oh my God. I God. Sure we had him. It, it had a little bit of girth. It was the right kind of hit, and it was just another big pike. And that's when we got the phone call from Gabe. Gabe says, hey, have you seen the tornado watch? Because Gabe wasn't with us that day. Now we're hauling ass to safety. So we just tied the boats up to trees on the side of the river, threw off our rain gear, and walked into town. And we're like, you know, let's just drink Bloody Marys. We get back in the boat, and it's still kind of it's spitting rain for a little while. You know, rain's always a little bit of a downer. It kind of, you know, puts a dauber on the situation. It was just like, this is not going to happen. I hate these fish. At that point in the float, uh, the tough part was just keeping, you know, our heads in the game. We, we went cloud away and, and really didn't move anything. And then all of a sudden, boom, clouds open up. And Rich jumps on the rod, and oh, there's a fallen tree in the water, one of 10 million we've thrown at in the last three days. And Russ goes, if there's going to be a musket, it's going to be right. Rich, come on. Oh, my God. Holy shit. Boom, this thing comes out. Gills flare. Ooh. Rich strip set. I don't remember setting the hook. <laughs> no follow, no sniff, just came off the log and crushed this fly. And then it's like not just hollering, it's like woo woo woo! Like freaking out up there. It was awesome. And paddled up as fast as I could. Look at this. Look at this musky dude. Get the bogey. Alright, how many friggin' hours of fishing hours is that, dude? Out. <laughs> 42 inches, brother. It was a frenzied moment, and you could just feel the pressure you let out of the place for sure. <laughs> yeah. And last final hour, man. <laughs> and it was just like euphoria. It was like this was the culmination of all the pain and all the Advil, and we finally get to blow the musky war horn. A 
great day out here. What is this place? <laughs> I can't remember the name of this place. Smell that? Beer. Yeah.